A few viewers have asked me if this is safe. This isn't a new question, it's just the most recent example. I've been asked many times if it's safe to cut or carve wood by passing it laterally across the top of a saw blade, essentially cutting with the sides of the teeth. Some people see that and they automatically assume it's a sketchy or irresponsible way to use a table saw. And I do have an opinion about this technique that may surprise you. But first I have to be clear that a table saw is a dangerous tool and you assume some risk anytime you turn it on. Things can happen that we just don't expect, which is why we use safety devices like blade guards and riving knives and safety glasses and push sticks. And that's why as a general rule, if something doesn't feel right to you, you just shouldn't do it, no matter what anyone on YouTube or anyone else says, even myself. Of course, that doesn't mean anything goes as long as you feel comfortable with it. Recently, I saw someone trying to freehand cut a circle on a table saw. He might have been comfortable with it, but that doesn't make it any less reckless. The difference between reckless and reasonable when it comes to assessing risk is best determined by asking yourself two questions. What could go wrong and how can you protect yourself if it does? Now let's apply these questions to these techniques. The first person I saw do this was Izzy Swan many years ago. It's a process for turning dowels or furniture parts, such as chair legs, on a table saw because you can achieve a consistent size and shape on multiple pieces much faster and easier than an unskilled turner could do with a regular lathe. A very similar process can be used to turn bowls on a table saw. In fact, I made a video about this some years back. It works. But to determine if the risk it poses is reasonable or reckless, we have to first ask, what could go wrong? Now, some folks believe that the saw blade was not designed to withstand pressure on the sides of the teeth. And they worry that a tooth could break off and then become a projectile. I don't agree with that assessment. For one thing, you aren't cutting with the full side of the tooth. You're taking shallow cuts that only engage the top corner of each teeth. And you're not applying that much pressure. Here I'm turning this bowl by hand. I can feel how much pressure I'm putting on the blade, and it's not that much. I compare it to pressing as hard as I can with my thumb on the side of a tooth. And there's no way I'm going to snap off a carbide tooth with that level of pressure. Think about what a saw blade goes through under normal cutting conditions. Each of these teeth hit the wood at about 140 miles per hour. That's a massively hard collision, and it happens over and over about 4,000 times every second. Sure, when a tooth strikes the wood with its face under normal operations, the steel of the blade is backing it up. But the cutting is not really done with the face of the tooth as much as with the tip, and those tips generally extend up above the steel blade plate. And those 4,000 collisions with the wood per second are direct impacts during conventional cutting, while it's only a side swiping action that occurs with the teeth when you're feeding the wood in a sideways or angled direction. Of course, the quality of your saw blade would be a factor. I'm not sure I'd do this with a cheap blade of questionable quality, but I wouldn't recommend making any cuts at all with a blade that's been poorly manufactured. I like to see nice, clean brazing around each of the teeth on my saw blades. The second thing that could potentially go wrong is the workpiece could theoretically catch on the blade and possibly get away from you Maybe if you're taking too deep of a cut, and then it could become a projectile in itself. In this case, the workpiece is held between two center points. One is sticking into each end. And I do mean that literally. There is a bolt driven deeply into each end of the wood workpiece. It would take a hammer and a fair amount of pounding to get that thing to break free. I don't believe there is any danger of it coming loose while cutting on the table saw. The bowl is held in place by hand. Now, is that less safe? Well, unless you've done it yourself, it's difficult to describe how little effort it takes to hold and turn the bowl within the jig. In fact, I could take my hands off it completely and it's still not going to go anywhere. Incidentally, this is a very similar process to what has been used to cut coves on the table saw for 100 years or more. Wood is fed directly across the top of the blade, either at an angle or sometimes directly perpendicular. 
The rotational direction of the blade and the jig that guides the workpiece makes it virtually impossible for that workpiece to be ejected. The third potential problem with these techniques is the effect such lateral pressure may have on the saw's bearings. Are they able to withstand that much force? Again, my response is that the force is pretty minimal. If you have a very old saw with worn bearings, then you probably shouldn't do anything that may add unneeded stress to them. But a saw of decent quality and condition should hold up fine. Now, those are the things that at least theoretically could go wrong. And as much as I think they're unlikely to happen, we still have to ask the second question if we're going to determine whether a technique is reckless or reasonable. How can we protect ourselves should one of these things happen? Well, the most obvious answer is to wear safety glasses in case something does fly back at you. And most importantly, be sure the jig itself keeps your hands away from the blade. Notice how her hands are positioned with lots of things between them and the blade. While the saw's blade guard had to be removed, the jig itself becomes the guard. If something goes wrong, if she's startled or something breaks, her hands are never over the blade or in its path. Likewise here, there's an inch of hardwood between my hands and the blade. And in this case, the jig itself makes it impossible to inadvertently get my hands too close. In fact, in both those bowl cutting cases, the blade itself was fully covered during the entire process so I was even protected from a flying tooth. So in my opinion, these techniques are not reckless. In fact, they're relatively common and have been for generations, particularly cutting across the top of a saw blade to form a cove. You've just perhaps never seen them before. But one question remains. While these techniques may not be particularly unsafe, are they the best way to do the job? Frankly, if you have a lathe, you're going to find it more enjoyable to make a bowl in the conventional way than with a table saw. The same is true with furniture legs. But there are cases, particularly when you need long, straight cylinders or multiple copies of the same simple shape, when a table saw jig can be useful. Now, you want to see something else useful? Ridge Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra-premium brands. Do yourself a favor. Use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again.